Hey everybody, welcome to the Cardboard Dungeon. I am Pat. And I'm Stu. And today we're talking about Puzzle Strike. This game was developed by David Serlin and published by Serlin Games. And uh, something interesting about uh, David Serlin as a game designer is uh, before getting into board game design, he worked with Capcom and he worked on the balancing of Super Street Fighter um, Remix on the consoles, and he was also the lead designer on a game called Super Puzzle Fighter, which was a puzzle version of the Street Fighter franchise. And his area of expertise is in balancing and creating asymmetrical game designs, which is uh, games that have a whole bunch of different characters, all with different abilities, uh, and making it all work together without something being super overpowered. And he's done that with Puzzle Strike. Now, Puzzle Strike is sort of a board game version of the video game Super Puzzle Fighter. It's got a lot of similarities to that in which uh, basically players are trying to manage their pile of gems while sending gems at other players and uh, trying to make them lose before they lose. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to basically give you a, a brief uh, description of the rules of this game and then uh, we will give you a gameplay demo and then we'll come back with our final thoughts on the game. So, how Puzzle Strike works. What each player is going to get is a player board right here. And the biggest feature of the player board is the gem pile, this large box here. So during the game, uh, gems are going to fill up in this gem pile. And uh, what you don't want to have happen is at the end of any one of your turns, you don't want 10 or more gems still in your pile because then you lose. And at that point, if it's a two-player game, the other player is going to win. If it's a three- or four-player game, whoever has the fewest gems in their pile is going to be the winner. Um, now, uh, Puzzle Strike is a deck-building game, similar to Dominion or Trains or even Quarriers in its basic mechanics, uh, which is each player is going to begin the game with uh, pretty similar bags of chips. This game uses these chips rather than cards like other deck-builders. But every player is going to get six of these one-value gems plus a, a single crash gem. And then where the uh, David Serlin asymmetrical expertise of this game comes in is that every player also has three unique character chips. And these chips all have different abilities that are going to be unique to that character. So everybody's going to have at their disposal some different options that only they can use during the game. And they wildly vary from character to character. Um, but most characters fall into one of three archetypes in this game. You've got characters who are really good at building up a bunch of gems and sending them at other players. You've got some characters who are good at building up a big economy, getting a lot of money so they can buy lots of chips from the bank area here. And then you've got defensive characters who are good at defending against other players sending gems and they can just hold out hopefully until somebody loses before they do. Okay, so what's going to happen in this game is uh, you're going to have your starting 10 chips. Everybody's going to put those in their bag at the start of the game. So you've got all these chips going in your bag. Each player's got one of these little screens. But they're going to keep their hand of chips behind because it's kind of hard to hold a bunch of chips in your hand. But basically, players are going to draw out five chips, and they're going to have that hand available to them. So on a player's turn, the very first thing that has to happen every turn is a one value chip is going to go into their gem pile. So it's called ante. It's just going to appear in there, add to whatever else is in there. And like I said, that's kind of like a timer counting down to when you're going to lose the game, or counting up rather to when you're going to lose the game. After you've anteed a gem into your gem pile, you get one action. And any chip that has one of these little banners on it is an action chip. So you can play an action. A lot of these, like this one that I'm holding here, one, two, punch, will have these arrows on them, and these arrows let you take additional actions. So if you played this as your action, you'd get two more actions. If the arrow is black, it can be any kind of action. Some chips have a colored arrow, like this chip here. Sneak Attack has a red arrow. That means that it's going to give you another action, but that action has to be used to play a red banner action chip. And there's red, blue, purple, um, I think that's all of them. Oh, tan, tan action. So. Uh, essentially, you can use those different actions and different color of actions to create combos and keep your action phase going over several chips that give you all kinds of different bonuses. Um, and once you're all done with actions, you're going to have a buy phase. And that's where these gem chips from your hand come into play. 
you're going to get to spend those they're worth their face value on the gem and you can buy as many of these chips from the bank as as you want so in the bank you've got more gems you can buy so you can buy better gems so you give you more buyer buying power during the game there's also the purple gems which are important because these are the gems that let you combine gems in your gem pile to make larger gems and send gems at your opponent uh, there's also wound chips and this is a wound chip here it does nothing and it says right on there this chip does nothing this is like your waste from trains or curse from dominion it just clogs up your bag and certain characters have ways of giving those to you. Some action chips will send them to other players and just give them a nothing chip on their turn, which is annoying. And then every chip uh, up in the top here has a number in black. That's the cost. So if you're gonna, you're gonna spend your gems to buy chips, you look at that cost, you can buy however many you have available to you. Once you do that, any chips that you didn't spend on your turn, plus anything that you bought, and use go into your discard pile you redraw up to whatever your hand size is and hand size is important in this game because as more gems appear in your gem pile your hand size goes up so on the bottom of your player board here it shows you at the beginning of the game if you have between zero and two gems you're going to draw five but once you get three four or five you're drawing six chips six through eight you're drawing seven if you have nine or more chips you draw eight so this is a neat mechanic because it basically builds in a comeback for players who are about to lose, they get more chips in their hand and hopefully more action so that they can reduce their gem pile and stay in the game. Uh, so the main gameplay mechanic of the game, what players are trying to do is use these purple chips. Purple chips are combine and the trash gem. And uh, what they're gonna do is combine chips, let you take two gems in your gem pile basically trash them back to the bank and replace them with a gem that's equal to the value of the two that you combined and the biggest chip you can get is a four so if I combine for example a three and a one I would get a four in my gem pile and then once you have a chip that you want to send you can uh, crash it with the crash gem to another player and when you play a crash gem you're gonna pick one gem from your pile say I'm gonna crash this two. First thing you do if it's not a one you're going to take it back to the bank and break it down into a number of one gems and send them at the other player. Now, the other player has an option at this point. Any gem that's got this purple shield on it, which the crash gems have, can be played as a counter crash from the player's hand. And basically, that's just going to let them send a gem from their gem pile back at the gems that are coming toward them. So if Stu had a one here, and if he counter crashed with a crash gem of his own, he would send a one the uh, two ones would cancel out and the whatever's left over on either side is going to go into the, the player's gem pile and it can get pretty ridiculous because later in the game when players have multiple counter gems in their hands if you get counter crash you can counter counter crash with another crash gem and if you do that and send gems back then he can counter 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 crash so you can keep playing those you can use one crash gem per event but each counter crash can be you know crashed again so it can, it can make some pretty crazy combos that can happen uh, even off of your turn. So these are real important to get during the game. And uh, then the game is basically going to continue on until somebody has 10 gems at the end of their turn and they will then lose the game. Uh, and that's basically how you play Puzzle Strike. And uh, now Stu and I are going to give a little gameplay demo for you here. I'm going to make sure I have all of my starting chips here. All right. And before the show today, uh, Stu and I drag raced down the street outside, and Stu won. So Stu's going to be going first today. That was a good race, Stu. I didn't think your car could beat mine, but no, you pulled you, it off. You, you'd be surprised at what those what those old mini coopers can do for sure so, all right, so i'm gonna draw five since we don't have any well first i have to annie i'm terrible about this because i did pat did just recently teach me the game and i always forget to put gems in my gem pile because obviously you don't want gems in your gem pile so it's easy to forget so i get to draw five now for my draw and then i have to 
take my actions based off of those. Alright. So I'm gonna play this crash gem at Pat and I'm gonna send this gem his way. And I'm gonna take that gem, because I can't do anything about it. Okay. And then I have four, and with four I'm going to purchase a combined gem. Or combined token, action token. And all these go back into my discard. I need to draw five. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then you always draw after then as well from your bag. All right, so at the beginning of my turn, I'm going to ante a one in my pile. I've got two there now. And I'm going to play one of my character tokens here. This is called Creative Thoughts. I get to choose uh, any two different symbols on there. And what this shows is these are the four big symbols that show up all over the place in the game. I can choose between uh, an extra action. This piggy bank here uh, basically means that at the end of my turn, I can bank one chip from behind my hand screen and save it until the next hand, the next turn. So like I said, normally at the end of your turn, anything you didn't play goes in your discard pile. And the discard pile is gonna go back in your bag when you can't draw anything else out of it. But I could keep one and carry it over. Uh, or I can just have an extra dollar to spend during my buy phase, or I can draw another chip. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the piggy bank and uh, another draw. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a chip out of my bag, throw it here into my hand, and then uh, I am done with my actions and I've got four to spend and I too am gonna buy a combine. And then I'm gonna bank one and when, usually when you bank a chip here, you just show your opponent there's one there, turn it over so they can't see what it is, but it's still in my hand, banked, right piggy bank. And then I'm gonna draw out five new chips. And since I have one banked, I'm only drawing four because the one bank counts toward my hand size. Go ahead, Stu. Don't forget to ante. Yeah, ante. Right now, add that to my gem pile. I'm going to play these Hex of Mirkwood, which allows me then to uh, get an additional blue action, but now the actual action that does will take effect towards Pat is each opponent gains a wound or discards two wounds. So I know Pat doesn't have any wounds yet. Yep, so no wounds to discard, so I'm taking that wound in my wound. discard pile here. Yep, and I can also then play a nice additional blue action, so I'm going to play this Bubble Shield, which is a special character action as well. And that's going to allow me, it's, uh, it says it's ongoing, so there's a little spot on our boards that says ongoing, and it will be placed there, and what that allows me to do then is negate a gem that will be sent to me in the future. So, and then, um, and then I do get to discard the chip then once I negate that. So, Pat, you never did uh, mention to me, though, um, do, can you play multiple ongoings, or can you only yes. have one ongoing at the same time? Okay. You can have multiples up there, yep, for okay. sure. That was something I wasn't aware of. So yeah, this is a little ongoing spot right up here that I'm playing that. And then, uh, and that, that's my last action, since I have no, you only get one action unless you add actions with your, with your chips. And so I only have two at this point, and I guess with two I will buy this knockdown chip right here. So, and then... Everything else I have then is discarded since I'm not banking any chips and now I have to draw five more chips. So I just put my discards in since I'm out of chips and draw five more. All right, well, I'm going to ante my one while Stu's drawing. And then I'm going to play, I've got a character ability here. It's called Chromatic Orb. And this is an interesting one because uh, it's every color. So I can use this as an any color action if I have colored actions to play off of, but I don't. It's going to be my only action this turn. And what it does is it just lets me draw another chip from my bag, which is empty, so my discards are going back in there. Draw another chip here. And then I get to crash a one gem in my gem pile. So I'm crashing that towards Stu. And Stu does get an opportunity to counter crash if he wants to, or his bubble shield that he has can just mm -hmm. negate it. Yep, so I'm just going to use the bubble shield, which will just negate the gem that's being sent to me, and then that just goes into my discard pile. All right, and so my action is done, and uh, I've got three buckers to spend here, and I'm just going to buy a gem value two. These all go in here, and so do the ones that I didn't use, and I'm drawing five still. Go ahead, Stu. Okay. Any up again, and... I'm going to use another Hex of Mirkwood, so thus Pat is going to receive an additional wound Fantastic. token. I love wounds. I'm slowly bleeding out over here. Right. Thanks, Stu. No problem. So now I get a uh, additional 
uh, blue action, don't I? You do. Whoops, I did that out of the order. Nope. <laughs> okay, well, that is actually just going to be, well, hmm. I have one gem, so I guess I'll buy one. I'm still too new to this game. You gotta play for the first few times to really get the hang of it, but um, but then that's just my turn then. Alrighty, so draw your uh, five again. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna anti my one while Stu's drawing, and I'm gonna play a combine. So here's the combine gem. Take two of my ones and turn them into a two. And this combine gem, um, is interesting too because it has a couple other abilities. Combines always give you another action, so they let you combo combines into other combines, or maybe you can crash right after that, which is neat. But it also takes one dollar away from your buy phase, so that's kind of important too. So when I go to buy, I'm going to leave that up here so I know that I have one dollar less. But I do have another action, and I'm going to play my creative thoughts again, which is giving me my choice of two different actions. And I'm going to take a chip draw and, oh, I think I'm going to take a dollar. So that extra dollar is going to cancel out my lost dollar, giving me three to spend right now. And I will buy another two. And I'm going to take all these. I've got three gems now in my gem pile, so I'm drawing six from my bag. Go ahead, Stu. And I think this will be our last turn here for our demo purposes. So I simply had four. I don't have any good actions, so I'm going just to purchase an additional combined gem for future use then, which would be my last at this point then. And then since I have three, I would then draw six now instead of just the five, and then Pat would now take his turn. Anti another one, and so it goes. So uh, this was kind of a boring demo, nothing really exciting happened. Sometimes the game is kind of slow for a little while, but it's got built-in mechanics to make sure that things don't drag out forever, and it's got a pretty good flow to it. With two players, you can get through a game in 15 or 20 minutes. Um, one mechanic that I really like is, uh, like other deck-building games, when a stack of action chips uh, empties out, um, it doesn't end the game like Dominion or, or Trains. It's not an end-game condition, um, but it does matter because if a second stack empties out, then you're going to go into what's called panic time. And as soon as that happens, instead of anteing one gems into your gem pile, you're going to start anteing twos every turn. And then if another pile empties out, you're going to start anteing threes. So, you know, things can heat up and add up real fast in this game, which is kind of neat, and I, I do like that. So you've got, you've got that uh, management of the piles and the stacks out here going on. Um, but in uh, the time that I've spent playing this game, and I've, I've played it online, there's a, a free online version of the game right at uh, fantasystrike.com, uh, which you can play to get the hang of the game. Um, I really haven't had that happen, so it's, it's not something that's going to happen a whole lot. You generally don't run out of stacks too frequently, and I think once you get better and better at the game, it will probably become even less frequent. Um, but that's Puzzle Strike. It's, uh, it's a neat game. I like it quite a bit. Uh, I'm not a huge deck builder fan, I will say, and this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I'm not a big fan of Dominion. I find Dominion to be a fairly dry game. I can't really get into the theme of the game, um, and artwork and uh, aesthetics matter a lot to me on games, and that's just a personal thing, but every time I've played Dominion, I just kind of feel like I'm going through a weird grind, and the more cards that are in the bank in Dominion, that directly negatively impact other players, the less fun I've had with that game because you can be trying your best to do, you know, cool things and build your engine and other players are just constantly taking cards away from you and messing with your plans. And there's a little bit of that in Puzzle Strike. Obviously, it's a competitive game. You're playing against other players. They can give you wounds that clog up your bag. Um, and there are some abilities and action chips that take chips away from you but most of the competitiveness comes in the crashing of gems back and forth. And that's just, that's kind of fun. And if you understand that it's got that competitive nature going in, um, I, I mean, I'm okay with that, where I don't like similar features of Dominion. Um, I think uh, before this game, my favorite deck building style game was Trains. And I still really like Trains a lot. And one of the reasons I like that game is because it doesn't have the highly competitive nature with all the cards generally you're doing your own thing and you can build your engine pretty fast and this game i think is more like that um, depending on what characters and what chips are in the game 
Uh, but you still have a little more control, I feel like, over how you build up your bag and and what you're able to do from turn to turn. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I think that this will probably, with more plays, become my favorite deck building game um, pretty quickly. So, Stu, how do you feel about this game? I think it's okay. I, on the other hand, actually really do enjoy Dominion. I've enjoyed a lot of the expansions that they've done. And I can understand how Pat wouldn't enjoy some of the features that they have within the game. It's definitely not for everyone. Not every game is for everyone. Uh, Puzzle Quest does a, does a great job of giving you a lot of things to consider and think about. For me, personally, it's almost a stressful game, which isn't bad necessarily for me, but I'm not very a person who likes a lot of stress because dealing with your gem pile, also trying to build your deck, and then just crash gems at your opponents, and making the right decisions at the right times because the actions in this game are definitely a lot more limited, whereas it's similar to Dominion in that style, but then Trains also technically doesn't have an action limit within its own game. So there's a lot of differences in, in the games in, in those regards. But uh, Puzzle Fighter, it does stand out in its own unique light. It's the mixes of both of those two, two games from what I've played Trains and Dominion at this point. Um, but, you know, I definitely would like to play it more and get more familiar with, with how it's played so I can obviously create my own strategies and formulate. But I, I do enjoy what I've, what I've been experienced, what I've experienced so far, I should say. So, you know, I'd give it a, I'd give it a good, not necessarily an amazing Alrighty. or a great, but definitely a good. We like it. And if you like uh, Puzzle Strike, it's, uh, it's available in two versions. So what we have here is the base version of the game in this nice pink box. Um, there's also Puzzle Strike Shadows, which is a standalone full game that comes with everything this one comes with as far as the common basic chips, the gems and the crashes. So you have everything you need to play, but all of the action chips and all of the characters are different. So you can buy either one of those versions. Um, I bought this one because in my research, uh, people say that this is uh, filled with more characters that are better for beginners and easier to learn. So Shadows probably has a, a little higher learning curve to it with the action chips and characters. Uh, but if you have both versions of the game, you can combine it all too and play different characters. And, and you can build your bank of action chips from, uh, from both games. Uh, and also, I want to mention this. Uh, there is a companion app available. Um, I don't know if it's on Android, but it's definitely on iOS. And uh, this, uh, it's, it's a Fantasy Strike app. Uh, Fantasy Strike is the world that uh, David Serlin has created. Uh, a bunch of his games, there's uh, Flash Duel and Yomi and Puzzle Strike. They share characters between games and lore between the games. Um, and this app has all three games. It's got companions for those. But what's cool about this is that it's got a, a quick bank setup. And you can choose the base game or Shadows or both. And you can just... Click the randomize button and it'll it'll randomize 10 action chips. Go to your box, pull them out, and you're good to go. So that's kind of neat. Uh, you can also, with this app, you can uh, you can get a close look at all of the chips in both versions of the game if you want to research it uh, before you go pick up the game. And uh, I understand that uh, there's a version of the full game in the works for iOS as well. So you'll be able to play it on your phone or your iPad in the near future, which is kind of cool as well. Uh, all right, I think that's all I have to say about Puzzle Strike today. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Cardboard Dungeon, and we will see you next time. This is the silent shot, by the way. <laughs>